Hi everyone. May I ask you a question? Have you ever thought about how much the Lord blesses you? Have you ever considered the possibility that we are very blessed and maybe we just don't realize it? Well, the fact is, the psalmist came to that conclusion when he was talking about the blessings of God and what that means in Psalm 112. And we're going to talk about that as we consider the, the idea of being very blessed. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for being our Savior and our Lord. And may we appreciate how much of a blessing you are to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Psalm 112, starting at verse 1, says this. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. His offspring will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. The title of our message, We Are Blessed. Let's pray. Holy Father, we thank you for who you are and being our God. And I just pray that we will always remember the many blessings you give us. And may we appreciate the fact that you are Almighty God. And may we understand that very clearly. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. The first phrase, the first sentence is praise the Lord. Which means that we should be saying... Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, very much. Let me sing this song real quick. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son. And now may the weak say I am strong. May the false say I am weak because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. We give thanks. Give thanks. Praise the Lord. The Lord wants us to do that. And it's because of the fact, praise the Lord, he says this, Blessed is he who fears the Lord. Now, to, to the minds of many, that almost seems like a contradiction. Praise God and be afraid of him? Yeah. Because in, so, in the eyes of so many, when we think of God, we are only allowed to think of him as a God of love. And he is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So he is a God of love. He loves us better more than anybody else. But he is a God who is holy. And he hates sin. He cannot be in the presence of sin. And so we have to remember that while he is holy and he loves, he is a 
mighty warrior of a king of a god and therefore we should be fearful of him as well and that's why when we see fear the Lord some are going you, you can't do it yes you can you can know that you can love him and worship him and thank him for who he is and recognize the fact that you don't want to go up against him that's a perfectly reasonable situation so it's very simple we praise him for being what he is who he is and we fear him because we, we know that we cannot get away with just anything we want and it says right here fear the blessed is the man who fears the Lord blessed you love the Lord you, you are praising him and yet you're blessed because you do know that he will not tolerate anything that goes against his word you can't just slap him in the face you can't just say stiff it Lord you can't do that he won't tolerate it because he is holy and he's pure he says right here who greatly delights in his commandments who greatly delights in his commandments God gives us commandments and of course we think of the Ten Commandments thou shalt not steal thou shalt not kill thou shalt not commit adultery thou shalt not bear false witness thou shalt not uh, worship any other God all the thou shalt not but there's a lot of other commands that are in the Old Testament that God wants us to look at and understand and he also has a great commandment of love the Lord thy God with all thy heart soul and mind love thy neighbor as thyself those are direct commands from God to us so that we live in a peaceable world because we are fallen human beings and we need that structure to keep us from doing stupid things so the commandments give us the structure and the commandments tell us what we can and cannot do and we need those but I think it's very interesting how he says that um, who greatly delights in his commandments it's kind of like um, the analogy of a child a child will want their way every single time because that's what children little babies will crawl every which way they can they'll reach here they'll reach there and the only thing that's going to stop them is if you either put physically take their hand and pull them back or you go like this whack like that and of course if you go whack like that they're most likely going to go whack that's what they usually do they cry but they need to know by that action of the whack that they can't go any further than that that's where you have to draw you can't just let them go crazy and do what they want because they will just destroy themselves and God knows that about us so he says this about this he says who greatly delights in the commandments we greatly delight in the fact that we have directions we are deli delightful of the fact that God said to us you can't do that you can do this you need to do this we need those directions and therefore it is a joy for us to have them because it gives us a sense of direction we know where we're going and if I may use the phrase a purpose as well and God gives that to us when he gave his son to say be saved by faith and those commands are what give us the direction don't go here don't go there you may do this you can't do that delight in the commandments because they give you a sense of what you're able to do and that's important as he goes on his offspring will be mighty in the land his offspring will be mighty in the land if you are able let's say you're a parent and you have children and you're raising them up as the phrase goes in the scripture in the nurture and the admonition of the, nurture and admonition of the Lord God's commands are front and center for those lives of your children and yours your life and your desire is to make sure the day 
do things according to the Word of God. That's what a parent wants their child to do. A born-again Christian parent wants their child to follow the scriptures. They teach them when they're youngest to what the Word of God says. And the whole idea is so they have a rooting in scripture. They have the rooting in truth. And as it says right here, he says, His offspring will be mighty in the land. You have children, you're a believer, and you raise your children, man or woman, to walk with God? That I may use a phrase that's a mighty force because what you're doing is you're giving to the world new people who are now following Jesus and if they're as dedicated as you are if you're dedicated and they're dedicated that is a powerful statement of the gospel and it's a fantastic statement as well and that's what the Lord is looking for. He says right here, he says, His offspring will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. You have brought out these children to walk with God. Now guess what? They're going to be blessed as a result of their walking with God. And you are going to be able to see them blessed. How would, will that look like? Well, maybe the example will be, your, let's say you have two daughters and two sons. Well, the two sons will come home with two lovely ladies who love God and want to serve Him. And the two women who are godly will bring home two men that want to serve God. I, I was told the story of a, a couple. They kind of bent the rules a little bit, but it still came out okay. My friend Dan, who was a Sunday school teacher, had a couple they knew. And I, I don't remember their name. They were very sweet people. They were such nice people that uh, when I needed a... Uh, something some extra work they gave me a job as watching their house for three days and I did and I they said there's the kitchen is loaded eat all you want and I did <laughs> right I had a good time nice people I watched their place they liked what I did well the story was the woman I want to say uh, let's call her let's call her let's, call, let's say her name was Kathy I don't know but I can't remember her the woman was say it was Kathy and, and, and the boy's name was Tom and Kathy was a dedicated Christian. Well, Tom wasn't a Christian, but he was attracted to Kathy because she was a pretty blonde, and he was a handsome young man. So he wanted to go on a date with her. So she, Kathy said, you want to go on a date with me? You're going to come to a Bible study then, if you want to go on a date with me. So he said, okay, I'll go. <laughs> well, he wasn't a believer at the time. As a result of going to that Bible study, he accepted Christ as a Savior. And so when they got married, they were both believers in Christ. Now, as I said, they kind of bent the rules a little bit. She got married to a guy who was a Christian. She didn't date a guy who was a Christian, but she was, well, not at least first, she got, they got, he got saved and they got married as a Christian couple. When you have a couple of kids, four kids, I'm giving that number, and two of them are boys and two of them are girls, they will find spouses that are going to walk with God because that is how God, is. you have walked with God and you've taught God, taught them godly principles, and that's the ultimate goal. And I don't, I'm not going to guarantee that will happen, but if you're raising them up properly, there's a very good ch chance that's what you've got coming is that you're going to have two lovely kids, four lovely kids who are going to bring Christians home, and they're going to raise up a Christian family themselves. That is basically what he's saying right there. Now, I, I know you can find the exceptions to the rule, and I know sometimes it doesn't work out that way, but that is the ideal, and that's the model, and generally speaking, it works that way, because that's what God intended. He wants us all to turn to him and then watch him bless us. That's the beauty of being a Christian. So he goes ahead. He says, um, The offspring will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. They're going to be, the generation of the upright will be blessed. He's got this group. They're following Jesus. They are serving God and they are being blessed by God. And then he says right here, he says, Wealth and riches are in his house. And his righteousness endures forever. Now, that gets a little trickier. Wealth and riches are in his house. And his righteousness endures forever. Now, people will look at that and go, Ah, they're loaded with money. 
or they got a big house. They might, but that's really not what it's trying to tell us. They might have nice property, and they might have that, but that's not really the core of it. What's actually the core of it is what you see in the next verse, where it says, And his righteousness endures forever. He is right. They may have some nice stuff, but the main thing is they are right before God. The wealth may or may not be in material. The wealth may actually be in spiritual growth. The wealth and riches may be in how close they are to God and how much they're a testimony to the community. It might be. It may be that they shine as lights to people in the neighborhood. That could be their wealth and riches. And then it says, what it says here? It says, um, and his righteousness endures forever. They are rock solid in the faith. And they are walking with God. And God is working through them. And that is what this is all about. It's about that walk with God. And the blessings that come from God. As a result of walking with him. Now. We see that. And it says right here. Light dawns in the darkness for the upright. He is gracious, merciful, and righteous. Light dawns in the darkness for the upright. Light dawns in the darkness. For, now, what, what's going on there? Well, we already know that as Christians, we are to be the light of Christ in a very dark and dangerous world. And we would already know about the candlestick that you don't want to put a box, uh, cover with a candlestick and block the light. God is saying that the testimony of your, 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 your saints of Christ, of saints of the Lord, you are giving off a light of Christ and you are shining in the darkness. This is what your righteousness is doing. You're living for God and you're walking for Him, with Him, and as a result, your life is reflecting Jesus. And that means that darkness out there can see the difference. People can see that you are acting differently, that you're talking differently, that you interact differently, and that your overall actions are different. Now, it doesn't mean that you don't go to work every day. You go to work. It, it doesn't mean that you, uh, uh, only, uh, you take the longest vacation. It means that you are the kind of person that people can trust. If someone walks over to your house and says, I've got to share something with you, then they share it. They know that it's not going to go anywhere because you don't gossip. Or if you know somebody that needs help, that you will maybe go up there when it's dark out and slip a box of food on their door and walk away and not say a word about it. They know that your heart is about serving God. I want to give you an example. There was a work situation in which I was listening to some people complain about, you know, getting. Uh, if I'm here until 11:50, I was actually hearing this. Uh, one lady said, "Well, you know, my job says till 11:15, but the teacher doesn't leave till 11:30. Do I have to stay?" And they said, "Yeah. Well, I'm not getting paid." And all I could think of was, oh, "Are you going to be that picky about this?" But she was. I didn't say a word. But it's like. That's the world. Well, you don't give me money. I don't see a reason. For, I'll leave. I, I'm going to walk away because I'm not being paid. Instead of, you know what? I'm responsible. I'm going to take care of this. I'm not going to worry about extra few bucks for 10 minutes. I'll stay. You see, that, that kind of goes a little contrary to the world because the world says, well, where, where, am I, where am I getting my money? God says, you live in such a way. Your actions are such the people can tell that you are a believer in Christ. Your actions. You don't have to walk around and quoting Bible verses every five minutes. You don't have to walk around and invite people to church every other day. I mean, nothing wrong with doing that, but not every other day, because you don't do it every other day. But you don't have to, because if you're interacting with people, you're praying for them, and you're in the Word, and you're saying, God, please touch their lives. If you're praying for them, you're saying, God, please touch, please touch their lives. And you're amongst them, you're talking with them, you're interacting with them, and you're doing this, and you're doing what you should be doing. If you're doing it in the way God wants you to do it, 
you should be the light that Christ is talking about. And you should be able to be distinguished from the others. The others are behaving like everybody else, the rest of the world. You are not pushing in their face, but you are you are acting just enough in a different way so people can say, you know what? There must be believers in Christ. You don't have to even walk your Bible around. You don't have to talk about church. You don't even have to sing a hymn. You can just be walking around and maybe have a nice smile on your face. Good to see you. You just, you're in the prayer, you're in the word, and God is shining through you, and the people can see that. And then it says right here, Light dawns in the darkness. He is gracious, merciful, and righteous. It is well with a man who deals generously and lends. It is well with a man who deals generously and lends. If you are a person who is thoughtful, thinking of others, is gracious, lends your time, lends your help, lends your money, lends yourself to the other person. That's beautiful in the eyes of God. You're, you're, you're allowing yourself to be a, a minister to somebody else. God, God likes to see that. It's all about appreciating the blessings that God gives you and about being the kind of person that God wants you to be and you're letting that shine. And then he goes ahead and says this. He says, Who conducts his affairs with justice. You, you who conducts his affairs with justice, you're not trying to get even with somebody. You're not trying to get back at them. You're not trying to make someone look bad. I don't know if you ever heard the phrase is that uh, whenever someone's doing an assignment um, uh, or doing something, you say, well, you know what? They, they turn and you go, I want to thank Joe over here for all the work he did. And Joe turns around and says, you know what, though? If it hadn't been for Phil, nothing would have happened. I'm not trying to be too s silly about this, but you really do try your best to let others take the praise. You, you, you do your best to not expect it for yourself. You, you, you're there to minister. You're not there to go, oh, come on, let me hear praise, praise, praise. You're there to say, you know what? You have done well. Thank you for being here. That's what we should be there for. And it says right here, it says, who conducts with affairs with justice. You want to be just about it. You want to recognize that man or woman for what they're doing. If they are there because they have a certain talent, and you say, wow, look at that talent you've got. God bless you for that talent you have. Or you want to make sure that someone gets treated fairly. Or you want to make sure that someone doesn't get blamed when it's not their fault. God wants us to be the person that acts in a just way and allows justice to shine in the right direction. That is our responsibility to be living in a way that honors that and honors God's way in that way. And then he says right here, he says, uh, is what would a man who deals governly? And he says, for the righteous will never be moved. The righteous, if you're living for God and you're really rock solid in the Lord, you're not going to be moved. Now, don't get, I'm not saying you can't get tempted. I'm just saying that if you're rock solid in the Lord, then that word of God is going to keep you solid. If you're determined to be focused, if you're de determined to serve God, if you're determined to follow Him, if you're determined to be dedicated to Him, then you will not be moved. I'm talking about the people who are determined to be following Him. They're dedicated to following Him. They want to follow Him. Those people are going to be focused on Jesus. And that's how God wants to be. And then, it says here, For the for righteous will not be never removed. He will be remembered forever. He is not afraid of bad news. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. Now this gets a little tricky. He's not afraid of bad news. His heart, right? His uh, trusting. His, his heart is is firm, trusting in the Lord. In other words, when stuff negative comes his way, he has the ability to say, "God's in control." Now, it's not as easy as it sounds, because we all 
have human, or we're, we're all human, and we all have those points where you push too hard and we can break. But basically, if you have the attitude, yeah, that's not what I wanted to hear. But at the same time, you can say, God, I, I'm leaning on you. I'm trusting you for the direction. I, I, I'm believing in you. That is what the goal is. That's what God wants to see in us. To really, completely trust in Him. Even if there's, the news isn't the best, he want, we want to so say, God, I, I know you're going to guide me through this. I know you're going to lead me through this. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commands. Praise the Lord. Lift up his name. Thank him for being God and watch him work in your life. Because that's exactly what he wants to do. But he gives us the formula here. Who, who greatly delights in his command. You delight in his commands. His offspring will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house. And his righteousness endures forever. Light dawns uh, in the darkness for the upright. He is a gracious and merciful and righteous. What a, what a statement of what, who God is and what he wants from us. What he wants us to do. It's very clear. That he wants us to depend on him and recognize. He wants us to recognize how blessed we are. We are blessed. We are very blessed. And friends, the Lord wants us to remember that all the time. We should remember all the time. How much he's done for us. How much he's answered our prayers. How much he's guided our lives. We are blessed. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love, for your mercy. And we just ask you, God, to please guide and direct us every single day. So in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. I encourage you right now to say, Jesus, I'm asking you to please come into my heart and be my Savior. Please. And if you're already a Christian, do your best to walk with him every day and recognize that we are blessed in every way. Uh, one thing before I close, I just want to let you know that um, in case you're wondering, right now we're going through a little bit of a heat wave here in Texas. It's around 100 degrees. Now, I am convinced that our summer has been really cool comparatively. I'm not trying to brag. I'm actually very grateful. But uh, it's nice to know that the heat hasn't been too bad, though. We've had a couple hot days. Nothing like last year. I felt like we were always having 100 degree days. So I just thought you would update. Oh, and by the way, um, yes, my Yankees have been going up and down. They're still neck and neck in the first place area, which is good. But one day they win, next day they lose. One day they win, next day they lose. So, that's my world. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.